Welcome back to Press Review. Let's start by taking a look at today's front pages in the Middle East. Starting in Saudi Arabia, the Arab News leads reporting that King Abdullah has congratulated new Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi for his historic election victory and called for a donor conference to help Egypt through its economic crisis. The paper also reports that the Ministry of Health has announced that 92 more people than previously thought have died from the MERS coronavirus, bringing the death toll to 282. The UAE's Khalij Times leads reporting that the powerful exiled leader of Pakistan's MQM party, Altaf Hussein, was arrested in London yesterday on suspicion of money laundering, his party said, as panic spread through his home city Karachi and protesters torched vehicles. The paper also reports that the UAE has moved up to become the world's 11th most sought-after foreign direct investment destination, underscoring the rising global investor confidence in the Arab world's second largest economy. From Lebanon, the Daily Star leads reporting that Berri warns lawmakers against continuing their boycott of parliament sessions, threatening to take serious measures against them. The paper also reports that Saudi Arabia's ambassador to Lebanon, Ali Awad Asiri, has announced a new aid programme to provide shelter for a thousand Syrian refugee families. The Egypt Independent leads reporting that the official spokesperson of the committee tasked with amending the election laws said that members have agreed to reduce the number of parliamentary seats from 600 to 540. The paper also reports that agriculture experts are warning that rising temperatures could threaten vegetable and fruit harvests, as these are sensitive crops. And Turkey's Hurriyet Daily News leads its front page reporting that Turkey has listed the Al-Nusra Front as a terrorist organisation in a sign that Ankara is increasingly worried by the rise of radicals along its southern border. The paper also reports that a rift over children allegedly kidnapped by the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party continues to grow as the People's Democracy Party turned down a call from the Prime Minister for the release of the children through contacts with the PKK. Now let's take a look at the top Middle East news from UK papers. The Guardian leads its Middle East news reporting that a renegade general whose repeated deadly assaults on jihadist in Libya's second city Benghazi have been met with threats of reprisal has escaped a suicide bombing, one of his commanders said. The paper also reports that it is the first attack against Haftar since he launched his offensive, dubbed Operation Dignity, on the 16th of May, aimed at eradicating terrorists in Benghazi. The Telegraph reports that the fiasco surrounding Qatar's alleged bribery of officials to win the rights to host the 2022 World Cup will test Britain's relations with Doha. The paper also says that Qatar's government has flatly denied the reports that the former Qatari official Mohammed bin Hammam orchestrated a campaign to literally buy support to hold the competition. But that hasn't stopped David Cameron hinting that Britain could step into the void if the tournament is legally wrestled away from the Sheikhdom. Now let's take a look at the top Middle East news in international papers. China's Global Times leads its Middle East news reporting that Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has been quoted saying Iran's government will firmly defend the country's nuclear rights and break the chains of illegal sanctions against Iran in its negotiations with the world powers. And finally, Germany's Deutsche Welle leads its Middle East news following the Syrian presidential election, which the paper says President Bashar al-Assad is expected to have won. It adds that although it is unclear when the final result will be announced, a source close to the government says it was likely it is likely to be on Thursday. And for more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us again tomorrow. Bye for now.